Hey y'all, what's good everybody? It's your boy Matthew Maley for MatthewMaley.com. Well, I am back in the poker room, so you know that means it's time for another poker wrap-up video. So, um, as you guys know, I've been playing a lot out of Casino Arizona. Um, again, sat 2-3, and uh, to say the least, I had a very eventful session. Um, got to the casino about... This is, today's now technically Monday, I'm sorry, it's almost 6.30 in the morning, and my mind isn't exactly there right now. But, um, got to the casino about 8 o'clock, got into 2-3 game about 8.30, and, uh, really from the beginning, I, I saw the mix of people there, and there were a couple people that I'd seen from way back when I used to play, as well as a person that I'd played with a little bit recently, so kind of had a little bit of a feel for the table. Nobody that I was really, really scared of. The one guy that I recognized from previously, I knew he was a solid player, but... I wasn't, you know, I wasn't really like, oh, I got to stay away from him. So, probably about seven or eight hands in. Um, actually, I'm sorry. No, that's not true. Probably about four hands in, I picked up pocket threes and uh, decided that I was going to try to set mine with it. Um, you know, I like to play a little bit small ball in the beginning. So, I simply just called. Four other people called. And sure enough, I flopped the set. So uh, that was a, a great first hand for me. I ended up, uh, I was actually in the big blind on that hand. Um, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That was, that was a few hands later. Um, I was actually third to act. So I called and then I think three other people called and then the, big, the blinds called or one of the blinds called. Um, and when I hit, I ended up uh, checking them. Um, it was a rainbow flop. I felt pretty good about it. Had a bet and a call and um, then I called. Turn card came out, put four to the flush on board, and it, I don't know, I just had a weird feeling about it. So, guy bet, and then I ended up raising plus 100. Um, so, right then, I'm already, like, you know, taking it almost a, down to, like, a stack left of my stack. Um, and the guy ended up folding, and he actually showed that he had a flush draw with top pair. So, I'm glad I got him out. You know, I'm very glad I got him out of the hand just who knows what would have happened. I was cool taking that down. So uh, between that hand and then two other hands that I just raised a little bit with, um, with like an ace-queen and another hand with um, a king-jack uh, on the button, I actually was able uh, to, to take down the first few hands. Um, picked up a hand of queen-10 on the big blind and um, flopped the mid-pair. Flop came up king-10-4, um, two clubs. So I flopped middle pair plus the second nut flush draw um but i ended up i call i check called all the way down i probably could have raised on the on the flop to see where i was at maybe but i ended up check calling all the way down my flush didn't get there and i didn't get better than just by one pair and the guy ended up having ace king so that hurt me a little bit brought my stack back down a little but um i kept grinding it out kept grinding it out picked up a, a decent pot with pocket eight um, I ended up, I was on the button, and one person there, two people had called up to me. I ended up putting in a little bit of a raise. I believe I raised it to 12. Um, and the small blind called, as well as one of the other people. And, you know, I don't, I only like playing heads up when I have, you know, a pocket pair like that. When you get two calls, especially in that game, any paint comes, you're usually in a little bit of trouble. Um, flop came up. Especially if an ace comes up. But Flop came up King 10 9. Um, and I don't I felt I, for some reason I felt like I was good. I, I mean having three over cards to, to me. I don't know why I didn't feel like I was good. But um ended up the guy who was in the big blind put a bet in. And the way he put the bet in, the other the next guy just folded instantaneous and he got back to me. How we put the bet in, I really felt like it was just a, oh hey, I'm gonna, you know, rather than let me continuation bet. I really felt like he was just trying to take the action down right there. I didn't feel like it was a value bet. Um, I really did feel like he was just trying to steal it. Because my also thought process was if he if he had hit a king, why not let me fire a continuation bet at it, then come over the top and you know possibly get my bet and possibly get a call from me as well. So he bet. Uh, I believe the pot was thirty, what thirty four. Uh, I'm sorry, thirty eight, and he bet. I want to say he bet, no, probably actually would have been like 42. Uh, he bet like 25, I believe. 
and I raised it up to 65. And I, I thought about it for a couple minutes, but I was very deliberate about my action. It wasn't just a, you know, like a bluff raise. I, I don't feel like I gave anything away with my actions leading up to my raise, um, to be quite honest. I felt like the way that I worked it, the way I acted, all of that played well, and it didn't give anything away. He ended up thinking about it for a little while and mucked. I think he probably had me, honestly. I think he might have had, had like ace 10 um, with middle pair, but I know he didn't have the king. If he had, when he had the king, he definitely would have, you know, come along. So I don't give him the credit for that, but I guess, I guess his lead out bet wasn't bad, but I do think he could have gotten an extra bet for me if he would have just let me continuation bet. Um, and I really don't know. That king scared me, so I really don't know if I would have called a bet if he had raised. So I took down that pot, uh, which was a decent pot. And then uh, had another pot. Uh, I, I was getting a lot of like decent, decent playable hands, but nothing that was really connected. But I was still able to keep building my stack up. I was taking a lot of, of pretty decent shots um, and was, was doing well. I was grinding it out. I hadn't been winning any big pots at all. But I was still continuously winning more pots than I was losing. So I just made a comment to the dealer about this guy had sat down. He had doubled up with a boat. And I made a comment about how, you know, I'd like one of those. And so I end up very next hand after I said that. I looked down and see two red aces. So I'm, I'm feeling good. You know, I'm feeling really good. And even better, it happens on my small blind. So I'm like, we're going to, you know, we're going to pump this. Let's do something. So ends up. Two people call, comes to a guy um, on uh, right after, uh, in the cutoff, uh, right on the other side of the button in the cutoff. He ends up raising it to 13, I believe. So I figure, you know what, I want to play heads up with these aces. I'm just going to, you know, I'm not going to try and get cute, anything like that. Let's just jam it. So I raise it up to 50. I'm sorry, no, I raise it up to 45. He thinks about it for a second, thinks about it for a second, and then raises it up to 90. So essentially just doubles my bet. And pretty much without even thinking, I end up saying I'm all in. And I had him covered. Um, so I still, the, the cap is a $300 cap on the table. But um, he always started the hand, I believe, with like 260 or so. Um, yeah, probably about like 260, 240, somewhere in there. I was almost to, I was I was actually over 500 at this point, so I was up about 200. Um, yeah, I was I was right about five, we'll say. So he ends up mulling about it for a second, thinking, thinking. He even says, he goes, oh, I'd be sick if you had aces. Oh, I'd be sick if you had aces. And he kept talking to himself. And by the end of it, he said, oh, I know, you have aces. I can feel it. You have aces. Well, I call. He flips over two queens. All right, 80-20, beautiful. I could be, you know, pulled out this pot, and I'm over 700. So, I mean, essentially, we've got a damn near $600 pot in there now. Um, and I, I feel good. I'm like, let's just dodge two queens, nothing silly. Let's do it. <sighs> Instantaneously, all my hopes and dreams, eh, down the drain. Flop comes up, king, queen, king. And just right there, I'm done. I mean, like, I'm now drawing to just two outs. And it's so ugly because even if it had just been a queen, at least I could have had, you know, some backdoor flush draw, some back, you know, some straight draw, something, something else. Nope. He boated on the flop. And then, of course, to make it even worse, the turn made him, made it so I had a straight draw, which I actually could have opened it up. And on the river, I would have hit the straight. Well, I did hit the straight, but it didn't do anything. So it was just brutal. Ended up off that pot. It was the first time I actually had to get up and walk away from the table. Um, I mean, I, I, I know I wanted his call, but in the same sense, it, it really, for what it really hit me hard. Like I haven't had, I haven't played a big pot with aces in a long time. My aces never get big pots. I don't get aces very often as it is. I swear I get them less than one every two hundred twenty hands. I swear I do. But when I do get them, it's usually just either a raise, call. Continuation bet fold or something silly happens with them, but I never win big pots with them. I mean, I, I can't the, the last big pot I won was my second trip ever to Vegas. I was playing at the Mirage, was had 500 in front of me, played 3 5, 
ended up I had my ace against this guy's kings was up to about a grand after the pot because they held up. That was the last time I had a big hand with them. Seven years ago. So I don't really get aces turning into big hands very often. So that would really hurt. Uh, got up to the table, walked around for a little while. That, when all was said and done after that hand, I was dropped to about two, probably like 220, 200-ish. So not too bad, I mean, but all the work that I've been doing to get up to that point, it, it definitely kind of hurt. So got up, walked around, talked to my boy Bill, you know, kind of refocused my mind, went and got a drink, you know, chilled out, listened to a little music for a minute, and uh, ended up going back and was able to, to shake it off all right. It was still in my mind, but it wasn't like I was focusing on this player going out of my way, you know, to play him, whatever. I, I felt like I brushed it off pretty well. But then I just caught this frozen wave of cards like you read about, and I ended up calling a, a I, I finally pick up a hand, finally, which it wasn't like it was a great hand, but I picked up jack nine. And uh, I picked it up on the button, so I called. Flop came up, hit a jack. So I feel pretty good. Play it all the way down. Check call my way all the way down. Guy ends up having jack 10. Kicker plays. So that pot really hurt me. That would drop me down to about buck 40, buck 50. Uh, picked up a hand with ace four of clubs on the button. Raised with it. Flopped four to the flush. Bet on the flop. Got called. Bet on the turn. Got raised. And ended up letting it go because it would have put me all in. And... I was all in drawing, you know, just to the flush draw, and I just, I didn't feel good about it. Um, I didn't really, I mean, the, the money was okay, but I didn't feel good enough about it. So I ended up uh, letting that go, and I was all the way down to 70, like, or no, $65 in front of me. I had 65 bucks, and then it got fun. <laughs> Then it got really fun. I ended up um, just grinding, man. Just just push it and push it. And it was like something clicked. It was, it was almost how it was when I played the World Series Circuit event. I took the third place a year and a half ago or whatever. It just felt effortless. And anybody who's ever played, you know, poker or, you know, anything where you just get in that zone, it just, that's just what it was. And I end up uh, picking up a, pick up a set with pocket seven, spike a seven, get paid off on that, and pretty much double up. So that got me uh, back up to about a buck thirty-five. Then I had a really good hand where I flopped a straight with ten nine. Flop came up um, jack queen eight, um, and ended up. So I flopped a straight. Guy ended up having two pair. Didn't turn into a boat. Ended up mucking on the river, but I picked up a pretty good pot with that. That got me back up to about 300, uh, maybe 310 or so. So my buddy had come over, Bill had come over when I was down low. I was, he was, he was ended up leaving, and I was down like, you know, back. I, was, I got back up to about a bill, and he's like, "How you doing?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm good, man." I'm, he's like, "Oh, you know, I don't see any blacks or greens in front of you. This game sucks." I'm like, yeah, well, I'm down, I'm stuck five right now, so I got a ways to go. But I'm like, I'm not leaving until I get back to even. And part of me, like, didn't really even believe that I was going to. Part of me just thought that if I got back to even, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I said I was going to double my money and leave. I didn't say even. Part of me felt if I got to even, I was going to leave. But um, I got back to even and then even had that moment where I was like, you know what? I should just go. I got, I got back, especially after my last session where, you know, I grinded and grinded and grinded for like five hours and was able to get back. You know, I, I felt... Like, you know, maybe that's what I should just do. Be happy. I didn't lose. Those aces hurt me, whatever. But I said, no, what? It's still early. At this point, it was only probably like 11 or so. So I'm like, I still got time. Let's do this. So I ordered some chicken chow mein <laughs> and uh, got, you know, at this point, I was about 310 or so. So ended up one of the bigger hands of the night. I picked up Pocket Kings um, and a raise. And two calls in front of me. It was like a raise to 13. Actually, three calls. Three calls in front of me. I popped it plus another 55, I believe, because um, I wanted to clear out some of the riffraff. Nobody called, so took down that pot. You know, that was a good $50 pot or so. Um, picked up another pot with jacks. Pretty much did the exact same thing. Um, 
but I actually, I raised, got one or two collars, flop, I set in my jack again, or I set it, you know, again, but there was flush and straight draws on board, and I, the guy ended up betting out, and he's had this feeling, like he was trying to see where he was at, so I raised a plus 100, and essentially not giving him the right odds, maybe it was implied odds, but I, it, it technically wasn't, uh, so he ended up going away, which was good because he was one of the stronger players. So I ended up letting, you know, getting away with, with taking down that pot. And uh, then one of this chick sat down, and this, this girl named Kelly, and I played with her before in a couple tournaments, and she's a solid player. Um, I've, I've seen her play probably three or four different times, and she's always been a really solid player. And as soon as he sat down, we started kind of joking, and we had a good vibe at the table. We had like four or five people down at our end who were constantly joking and laughing and playing around. And the guy who was sitting directly to my right was just getting crushed. When I first sat down at the game, he had like 900 in front of him. And when I ended up leaving, or when he ended up leaving, he got completely felted. Then there was another guy sitting three to my, my right, who had just acreage of chips, but was the comedy section of the night. On one hand, I had King Ted flop. This guy pushed all in. Both of us called. Um, he, he had pocket. The flop came up five blank, uh, blank, turd card, hit a king. I end up uh, betting at it. This guy raises. I, uh, I bet 25. This guy called was essentially all in. This other guy goes, huh, this guy that I said was a funny guy. He's like, oh, only 50, huh? I guess I'll donate. I'm like, 50? It was only 25. What are you talking about? He's like, I'll donate. Raises to 50. He goes, you got it. You got it. And makes to 50. So I, up, I have no idea where I'm at. I end up mucking. He rolls over King 4. So my King 10 was ahead. And that was one of our things for the rest of the night. We constantly kept going, you got it, every time when, you know, we thought we were behind or, you know, some, some random stuff like that. And then, then the, <laughs> for whatever reason, when uh, I said something to, to this girl, Kelly, to win, and that she had wanted us to take it down, she made a shoveling motion for taking it down, which we still haven't figured out what that means. But <laughs> we were laughing the whole night about it. Plus, uh... Her other great quote was, win, lose, or draw, win, lose, or draw, at least we're going home with memories. And uh, the way she said it was like it was a damn Hallmark card. So it really was just a fun, chill atmosphere. Uh, my only mistake of the night, uh, well, hold on, I'll get back there. So the, the biggest pot um, ended up, I picked up pocket aces again. And sure enough, <laughs> same guy who cleared me out the last time, has him. I mean, I'm sorry, is, is in the pot. So, goes around, he had raised, I end up raising, again, plus like 150 or something, and he ends up calling me, he even says it again, he goes, I'm sure you've got aces, I'm sure you've got aces. Ends up, um, and this, this is before I built all the way back up to like five, I was only at about like 350 or so. Um, no, probably about 250, because when I won this pot, it got me up to right about five. And he ended up calling with ace king, flopped the king, was a little scared, but it held up. Um, if my ace would have been cracked twice in one night, I probably would have cried. So that was beautiful. I ended up uh, getting it back from what he did earlier to me. So that was nice. And then, uh, then later on, uh, I picked up aces again against Kelly. And I admit I, I soft played her a little bit just because we've been kind of, you know, having fun at the table and BSing. And there had been a head earlier where I had raised... And she called, and then she said, I'm following your lead. And so I checked, and then she checked, and then I bet, and she called, and then I checked, and she checked. So this time, I had picked up aces. She had raised pre-flop to like 15 or something. I made it um, 36 more. She called, and then she's like, I follow your lead. So I soft played her a little bit. I should have. I should have bet it out. But we checked it all the way down, and I ended up taking down the pot, showing her my aces. Um, and then I had another hand with pocket fours, where... She had just played a hand with pocket fours and what a decent sized pot. We were talking about it. Very next hand, I pick up pocket fours and I spike a set. So ended up, uh, got up to about five, what was it, 590 or so, almost 600. Then got a little bit over 600, um, lost a couple pots here and there. And finally decided it was about 4.30 in the morning, uh, decided that even though I didn't really feel tired, 
Um, that I was going to just be happy with doubling my money and was going to cash out and get some sleep. So I ended up uh, walking with 600 so I was able to come back um, after being stuck, $535 I had essentially from 535 down to 300 up, had a good $835 swing, plus that dinner, um, so that was nice. And it was ended up being a good eight and a half hour session. Um, so it really, it really felt good, or eight hour session, whatever it was. It really felt good playing that long of a session because that had been my longest session since I got back into playing. So it felt really good, and it just felt just like I was at ease, honestly. Like I felt like I was really completely at peace and completely at ease uh, and just was playing really good poker. And when you can fall into that zone to where you aren't even having to think about it, it's just second nature, the bets you're making, the moves you're making, that's a great feeling. And it was definitely cool. It was definitely a really, really cool vibe. So, great vibe at the table. Kelly was hella cool. Hopefully, we get to play a couple more times before I head off to Vegas. Um, and the rest of the people at the table, some good competition, but there was still some good money. And it's fun when you can still laugh and have fun without losing your game. Because a lot of times when you, when you are laughing and having fun, mentally, you lose your focus a little bit. You fall off your game. And that wasn't the case at all with this. So... Ended up, walked out with a nice purple and a black chip. Um, as you can see, these aren't my standard purple chips. These are the Imperial Poker Tour ones. Here's an actual Casino Arizona one. So I uh, walked out with a purple and a black and was definitely happy about it. And uh, this will also keep me from spending my money at centerfolds. So once it's in a chip, helps me save it. So ended up being a really good session. So hopefully uh, I'm going to head back this week a couple days and uh, see what happens. And... Go from there. So, as always, thank you for checking out my videos. I am Matthew Bailey for MatthewBailey.com. This was another poker recap video from the 2-3 uh, spread limit game at Talking Stick Casino, Arizona, here in Phoenix, Scottsdale, whatever it is. So, as always, thank you for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. Let me know what you thought of my recap. Um, there really weren't many hands that I felt I could have done something different with. Um, so, I felt pretty solid about it. Um, I actually got some feedback about one of my other recap videos, so I want to say thank you for that. Definitely appreciate your feedback, and uh, keep it coming. So, as always, thank you for checking out my videos. Um, we're getting close. Uh, the, the It's May, officially, and we only got about three weeks until my trip. So, I'm really excited. Uh, about three and a half weeks until the World Series starts, so I'm super excited. So... Till then, keep checking back, and uh, please believe there's going to be tons of videos popping up, so stay tuned to MatthewBailey.com. As always, check me out on MatthewBailey.com, the video blog site, or you can just search for me on YouTube. Search for Matthew Bailey Poker. Got all my videos on there. It's like 250-something videos, so you can like, comment, and subscribe. Waste a couple days just watching them if you've got nothing else better to do. Uh, of course, you can also follow me on Twitter. I am at Matthew Bailey, and... Uh, like your boys page on Facebook. Search for Matthew Wayne Poker again. So until the next video, I am officially signing off. And uh, it's time for me to go get some sleep. Because it's about 6, what, 7 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, sun's coming up. So I am going to go to bed and then hopefully do it all again tomorrow. So peace out, everybody. And uh, hope you had a good weekend. Hope your week started off good. And I'm uh, sorry for everybody who has to go to work. Because I don't. Peace out. <laughs>